Hello, my fellow developers. Imagine that you've got some data you want to play with, and presently the data is stored in a CSV file. So you need to take this file and load it into your database. But there is one problem, one missing component. You don't have a schema file, the file with all of those create table statements that have to be executed first on the database end. And today I want to show you how you can solve this problem literally under a minute by using dbeaver. Let's go. First, we need to pick some sample data set. A few days back, I came across this Netflix data set. It stores information about the most popular shows and series on that streaming platform. Specifically, the ranking in this data set is based on the hours watched by all Netflix subscribers. And here you also can find information by country. Interesting. Let's go ahead and click the download button. All right, I've got it. And now if you go ahead and open this data set, You'll see that, yeah, that's a typical CSV dataset. And if you keep scrolling down, you will discover that we have more than 200,000 records in this file. But this is just raw data. There is no any schema file with those create table statements. If you don't believe me, let's quickly double check on the website. Jumping back to the Kaggle website, and if you keep scrolling, you will not find that file with necessary DDL statements. So you need to figure out how to create the schema. But dbeaver can come to the rescue. Let's take a look at it. As you can guess, dbeaver is already installed and running on my local laptop. I will be using Postgres for the Netflix dataset today. But if your database of choice is different from Postgres, not a problem at all. Because I guess that dbeaver literally supports all of those databases that are listed on the DB Engines website. Just pick it. Okay, so what do we need to do to load that raw data into Postgres or any other database? Select your schema. I will be using the public schema and then bring up this menu. And from that menu, go for the import data task. Yes, our data set is in the CSV format. That's why selecting this option and moving forward. On the next screen, we need to provide our sample raw data. That's the file that we downloaded from the Kaggle website. What's next? All right. On this screen, you can change some table specific settings, such as the target table name, the names of its columns and their data types. For instance, I don't think that all Wix countries is the best name for my table. How about we name it Netflix? Also, if you click the configure button, you can review the names of your columns and their data types. As necessary, you can always change them, but I will leave everything as is. So what's next? You can change and adjust low level settings that are related to the data loading process. I don't want to touch anything on this screen for now. And that's your final review screen. That's our raw data. We are going to load this data in my Postgres database instance, and the data will be stored in the Netflix table that will be created by dbeaver for me. All right, let's click the proceed button and move forward. And now you can see that dbeaver has created the table and keeps inserting the rows. And it will take some time to load those 200,000 records. Let's wait. Congratulations, my friend. The Beaver has successfully loaded the Netflix dataset into this Postgres instance. How about we go ahead and play with this data a little bit? Okay, so I want to open the SQL editor. And first, the sanity check. Let's see how many records do we have in the table. I want to make sure that it's not empty. For that, we need to run select count star from Netflix. And we do have more than 230,000 records in our table. But it's obvious that I downloaded this dataset not for running this trivial request. Let's do something more interesting with this Netflix data. Checking the columns list. And one of the columns, uh, the last one, it stores information about cumulative weeks, a series or show spent in the top 10 on Netflix. That sounds interesting. Let's figure out the name of a show or series that spent most of the weeks in top 10. Running this request, we want to select uh, the show title, then country name, and then cumulative weeks in top 10. We're selecting from there. Netflix table, where cumulative weeks in top 10 equal to the max cumulative top 10 using this sub query. That's it. Let's execute this request. And you can see that the series about Pablo Escobar is the top performer. 
the series spent 102 weeks in the top 10 on Netflix. That's huge. And one last thing before you go, my friend. You remember that we did not have the schema file with create table statements, and that was the reason why we selected dbeaver in the first place. But right now, dbeaver can generate the schema file with required DDL for us. Let's do it right now. For that, all you need to do is to select your table, it's Netflix in our case, go to the Generate SQL menu, and here is click DDL. And voila, here you can find that create table statement that was necessary for us. So right now you've got everything, you've got the raw data, you've got the DDL, and you can use this data set whenever you like. How do you like this? The beaver can literally take your raw data and generate all the required tables for you. Isn't it cool? So keep mastering databases, my friend, and stay tuned for the next videos. Bye-bye now.